So to make your penny stove, what you're going to end up needing is a pair of tin snips, a pair of pliers, a sharpie, the two cans, and then either a small nail or push pin. You can also use like a Dremel or a drill, but only if the drill bit is small enough that it'll be about as big as one of these nails. So starting off, the easiest thing that I like to do to measure the bottom is I find where it says the 140 calories per can, any, you know, 110, 115, it depends on the soda, but they all have this little mark right here. So I take the very top of that and that's gonna be where I end up making my line. And so I'm gonna actually draw that line all the way around. I'm gonna do that to both cans. Now on my second can, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take from the top of the barcode. I'm gonna draw my line actually from the top of the barcode around the can. So now what I gotta do is I gotta take a tin snips and I gotta cut out both cans. Main thing is I find it easiest to go through the mouth of the can because you don't need the top of the can you're trashing the rest of the can um, if you don't have tin snips you can actually do this with like a pair of like basic kitchen scissors if you want um, it's not great on them but you can if you want I usually go right to the line but I don't cross the line I kind of stay on the outer edge of the line since the aluminum has the paint and everything on it you can actually wipe this line off later it's not gonna stay it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I suggest you're careful when you're cutting this. Um, the aluminum edges are very, very sharp. Uh, if you want to feel safer, if you got little ones and they want to join you on this project, maybe make them wear, uh, you know, gloves over their hands. Just so, just so that way they're careful. And now that I have it cut out, this kind of just what it looks like. Uh, you can try and like I see that this one's bowed out a little bit more than the other so I, you know I can kind of clean that up trim it up and everything so let me do the other one now as you can see I got a smaller one and a larger size one and I'm actually going to crimp the edges of the larger size one and that's what's going to fit down into the smaller one as you can see the edges I'm crimping the edges as such all I'm doing is grabbing the end and giving it a twist like I would just a key in a lock. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing about this really has to be perfect or anything. Uh, if you mess up, just go find your pop can. Recut it. Doesn't take too long at all. If it starts to bend in on you like that, you can actually just with your fingers and I move it back out into position, straighten her on up. All right, so now I have my larger one. I crimped the edge. We got the smaller one now. I'm just gonna try and seat this inside. You may have to do some finagling, doing some twisting, getting it going in there. But I promise you, they do fit like that. So now I've got to actually shut it all the way down as far as it'll go. You want to do that with even pressure, so a little bit at a time, and you are going to be fighting the air pressure that's already in the can. You hear it release just a little bit. So if you get a split like that, dead can. No good. Uh, this is no good can't work with the splits so now basically you got to get a new can recut one edge call it a day we're gonna try this again so now I have my two sides squished together so I'm gonna go ahead and take my tin snips I'm going to cut off this extra bit around here. If I don't do that, when I go to poke my holes, it's too easy to cut my fingertips and slice them up on this part right here. Now I've marked out with a sharpie, 
16 holes around the outer rim and three in the center divot on the can. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take a little thumb push pin. I'm gonna go ahead and push out each one of these holes to form them. Another thing you can do is if you don't have that, you can use a small nail or you can also use a Dremel provided that you have a small enough drill bit. Got the 16 around all poked out, and I just gotta do those three in the middle right there. All right, guys, so now we're gonna take our penny stove, get ourselves a nice penny, and then use some heat for fuel. You can get these for about $1.50, sometimes even less, about 90 cents on the cheapest as I've ever seen. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can't get this baby to light. So we'll go ahead and take our fuel. I'm gonna fill up that reservoir. You can see it drains down like that. We're gonna keep going. Just slowly filling up that reservoir. Watching it drain down until it doesn't drain down anymore. So once we get the main reservoir filled, we go ahead and we put the penny sealing up those three holes in the center. Fill up the reservoir one more time on the top. And we light. So any splashed fuel that's around the sides, we'll go ahead and burn off. And then once that burns off, that vaporizes the fuel inside and you'll see the burners on the outside start going pop, 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 pop. See the flame coming out of the holes right there? Right there to a boil. About seven minutes for a boil. What's cool about this, guys, is the can is flat, so you don't really need anything else to set your cup on. You can set it directly onto the stove itself, provided you have a flat surface. Right here guys is an older one I made back in 2011 and this one's been run through the ringer and burned more times than I can count and I've got pictures of it and in fact my wife used it on our last backpacking trip and this thing's still going strong just two bottoms of pop cans. On all y'all I'd say that penny stoves are a cheap and lightweight alternative to any of the store bought stoves that you could then take with you out into the woods. They're great for hunting just for making quick meal right then and there on the trail, day hikes, anything like that. If you're gonna pack for a multi-day trip, these still work, just make sure you pack a few more bottles of heat.